welcome to the inaugural edition of the Golden Hour, a new content series from us here at the Horizon League. Why Golden Hour, you might be wondering? Well, we won't be going a full hour, but it is significant because it refers to the horizon, uh, the name of our league, and the joining of student and athlete and earth and sky in that beautiful time of day where the imagery is wonderful. We also use it to talk about big wins over power conferences in our league, such as Wright State's volleyball wins over Ohio State and Miami last month. For us, this is a major win in the digital space, big conversations with big people throughout our league and beyond. Join us. Rachel White here on the Golden Hour Content Show with Commissioner Julie Rowe Lash. Julie, we just had some key membership meetings this fall with our board and our council. Obviously, basketball excellence and our commitment to that, a key topic. So talk a little bit about what kind of came from those meetings and what we're working on here in the Horizon League. Sure. Well, it's it's basketball almost 24-7. Before I get to that, though, I just want to say, one, I'm really excited that you and our comm squad, as we affectionately call our communications team, we are launching this Golden Hour podcast, and I just want to shout out to our H icon logo here that is the Golden Hour of the Horizon. Golden Hour is when good things happen, and this is definitely a good thing happening. So thanks to you and the team for launching this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so back to the question at hand. Uh, our Yeah, our council met earlier in October, and then our board just met. Lots of obviously national issues that they talked about. And while that is certainly important to keep our eye on what's happening, we also know that basketball is a priority in this league. And kudos to our council and our board for stepping up once again and really putting our money where our mouth is, so to speak, and continuing the investment in men's basketball and then launching this new effort, which we're excited about in women's basketball. Yeah, let's start right there with men's basketball. So obviously we, we extended our performance and excellent funds. So talk a little bit about those, why those are important for our league and why we continue to make that commitment. I'd love to. So we started a few years ago with this multi-pronged strategy as to how to really move the needle in basketball. So just talking about men's for a second, we know there's not a silver bullet and it really starts with our campuses and their commitment. But a part of that is scheduling and a part of that is investment. And on the investment side, we said we're going to take some of our league savings and really reward excellence in men's basketball. So we've got metrics and secret sauce that our ADs, coaches, and presidents signed on to. And we put that money into an excellence fund, and we've distributed that for the last two years for men's programs hitting those marks. We also created what we call a performance fund, which obviously Oakland was able to um, tap into this past year with their incredible win over Kentucky. So we reward teams, one, who just meet what this metrics that we've set in place on the excellence side, and then those teams that actually make some noise in the postseason and the NCAA tournament and earn that unit, they also benefit from that. Great. And obviously we know there's a huge movement happening nationally with women's basketball as well, and the Horizon League obviously at the forefront of that also. So talk a little bit about how we're now kind of applying that to our women's basketball programs as well. Right. So our women's and our women's teams, just hats off to them because they've we've continued to move up the conference rank net on both the men's and women's side the last three years. And our women right now are 17 out of 32, which is terrific. And they're going to break through 15 soon, I'm sure. So with the women's side, again, kudos to our leadership because we are also creating and I think it might be the first of its kind, at least that, that's my claim until I'm corrected, uh, we are launching this Women's Basketball Excellence Fund. So we've created just the same amount of money with similar metrics, but tailored to the nets. Yes, the women are using the net, but a little different quadrants with team sheets. So recognizing those differences, we put some money into this Women's Basketball Excellence Fund that is now effective. Our president signed off on that. That's awesome. Just more major moves from the horizon. That's right. Like focusing on men's and women's basketball. It's great to hear it. And Julie, you talk about a significant investment we're making here in basketball with these funds. You talk about significant. How much are we talking about in terms of dollars here? Okay, you're posting me up a little. <laughs> I appreciate it. So the first excellence fund that the board set up for men's basketball the last two years was 200000 each year. And they approved continuing that for the next two years. So we're talking another 400000 invested and this is really an unfunded subsidy, if you will, towards men's basketball. They signed off on the same amount for women's basketball. So 200 for year one and 200 for year two. So they signed off on an 800,000. I know you can do math, but they signed off on an $800,000 investment for men's and women's basketball as part of this excellence fund for another two years, which 
I think is extraordinary. And that to me really shows this commitment to continuing the campus and league investment in basketball. Yeah, we're doing a lot more than just talking about our commitment, we're really right. demonstrating it with that $800,000 investment. Exactly. Any other news or updates to share from the board meeting? I think I would add, okay, so you've got the Women's Basketball Excellence Fund. The NCAA, we expect them to approve, and I'll be there to cast my affirmative <laughs> vote in January at the convention, the um, implementation of this women's basketball unit. So teams that win in the tournament will now also be receiving revenue. Just as we do on the men's side with the performance fund, we will have, and we've already approved, a women's basketball performance fund. So those teams that earn a unit, which we're going to have some, they'll be able to take a share just like Oakland did on the men's side last year. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us and being here with us. It's great to see the major impact being made here by the Horizon League, and thank you for joining us on the inaugural episode of the Golden Hour. Thank you for joining the Golden Hour, and thanks to Commissioner Julie Rowe Lash for being our first guest. We've got a busy week ahead with soccer league play continuing, the start of the Women's Soccer Championship this weekend, and our cross-country championships in Green Bay, while volleyball continues and basketball season gets underway. Keep following us on all of our socials at Horizon League and visit HorizonLink.com to keep up with all the action. I'm Rachel White. We hope you have a major impact in everything you do.